Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not, if, if I've watched enough Wes Watson videos, his real crime was bullying outside his race, right? You're supposed to keep that stuff in your own race, right? That, yeah, that's why they green lit him to mm-hmm. have him attacked. Yeah, absolutely. He was violating the rules. Yeah. Hmm. So so by, by rule of that, I know you the just rules. mean like if you're gonna fuck with someone and you're in the Aryan gang, not like the head honcho guy, you you fuck with other Aryans. You don't go mess with the cholo okay. or whatever you said the other. Hit, the deal is this: they want to keep the drugs business running. They want harmony to an extent. Now, if two black guys have got a beef, you know, go under the stairs, squash the beef. Two white guys have got a beef, go under the stairs, squash the beef. Black guy and white guy, same thing. Go under the stairs, squash the beef. They don't want it igniting into a race riot. If you've got issues within your race, you go to your head, and the head makes the decision according to the convict code. So what was happening was multiple people who were getting bullied by SmackDown were going to their individual heads and saying, look, this guy's doing this to me. This guy's doing that to me. It's going against, you know, the racial mm-hmm. conduct. What's go- is something going to happen about this guy? And so many people went to so many heads that the heads got together and they decided to end it by sending the three torpedoes in. Okay. You, you mentioned just then the, the convict code. Now, I'm sure yeah. you've gone over some of that, you know, a lot of rules thus far just in this conversation. What yeah. what's some of those kind of or bits of that code that those of us who've never been to maximum security prison would have no idea or maybe not expect? So you guys are probably hip to a lot of it already. Like snitches get stitches, you know, mm-hmm. sex offenders, the chomos, they're gonna get stabbed up, KOS, kill on site. Some offenses are SOS, smash on site. So for example, drive by shootings. If a woman and a, excuse me, if a woman and kids get hit, especially in drive-by shootings, that happens a lot. They don't like that at all, um, the gang members, mm-hmm. the heads. So you're going to get a beat down at least for a drive-by shooting. You know, if you know a guard from the streets, maybe you went to the same school, you knew a guard from some something, keep it to yourself because that will get exploited. If you start chatting to the guard, you're through because they're going to think you're snitching or you're grassing, you know, you're grassing someone else for in England, they say grass means snitch. I know a lot of Americans don't understand that. Grassing someone out means snitching someone mm-hmm. So um, showering, bad hygiene. Um, the guy who was in the shootout, the drive-by, who the girl's nipple had come off, that guy, like I said, you know, he was this huge guy, like 300 pounds, and um, he was sweating constantly, and it was stinking a bit. So... The gang, the Chicanos got together and had a meeting about him, a hygiene meeting. And he was they, they were either going to beat him up and make him roll up, just end the problem right there. But they allowed him to stay on the grounds that he had a shower every couple of hours and coated his, ba- his uh, skin in baby powder after every shower. <laughs> so, I think I must have spelled ripe. <laughs> every couple hours I had to have a meeting <laughs> to deal with man this is fucking it. getting gross man <laughs> <laughs> so we know you can't snitch right can you get away yeah. with dry snitching like so i watch these prison youtube video genres right and and mm-hmm. an example of dry snitching right maybe you beat me up and then i'm all bruised and marked up i go to the cafeteria and eat right that's my way of letting people know shit went down and, and, and maybe that's a way of telling on you without ever doing it do, do people get away with dry snitching at all or is that stuff I'll give you a, a story from Two Tony's book so Two Tony's you know he was in decades before me in the 70s and the 80s and there was a young prisoner that he was t- he was talking to regularly and he became friends with and the guy only had a year left he was going to get released but the guy idolized the Aryan Brotherhood. He was rising up and he wanted to earn his stripes. So they gave him a piece of metal and they said, do a number on this guy and you'll be a full patched in member. And he dropped the metal, you know, where the guards could see it and didn't do the hit. And the two Tonys went to the shot caller 
and said, you know, he's only gonna, he's only got a year left, blah, blah, blah. And the guy said, we got to make an example. It's a done deal. Back away. And to Tony's new then, if he backed this guy up anymore, he would be hit next. So he backed away. And he said he was on the rec yard. And he just talked to the kid. And he's, you know, the kid said, well, hey, fix me up with the fellas. I'm going to go and walk the yard with this guy. And the guy was, you know, the guy who was the shot caller was going to, who had already put the green light. And he too, Tony saw the, the, the torpedoes, the probates, digging up the shanks on the rec field. And the guy's got his arm around, you know, like the youngster telling him, you know, you're going to be all right. And then they, they just come up and did the hit. And I he did. said, yeah, and, and it, it really murder? affected two Tonys. And he said, you know, it made him want to help people um, later on in his life. Two Tonys was released from that sentence. And the guy who was responsible for that hit, um, he ends up showing up at Two Tonys' house when he got released. And Two Tonys helped him out because they were all clicked up, these Aryan Brotherhood guys. But then the guy started to take over Two Tonys' house. He moved the crystal meth chemist in. And Two Tonys knew this guy was going to kill him. So Two Tonys said, look, Let's go and do this robbery in Flagstaff, I think it was. And he's driving up there with them, and he knows, you know, they've got a gun and they're going to take him out. So Tony um, gets out of the car at a gas station, um, just turns around at the window and just fucking shoots the guy and kills him. So he did kill the guy eventually. Wow. So uh, yeah, they put a hit on that young guy with only a year left. Yeah. I'm naively still hoping a hit means he got like a black eye. No, nah, he's dead. He's dead. Yeah. <laughs> he's dead, huh? Shanked, shanked in the femoral artery and shanked in the chest plate. Oh. And and he didn't survive that. That's the quickest <laughs> way to go. They'll get your heart and they'll get your femoral artery 